Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is an exciting day as it marks the global debut of the all new Dodge Charger, something Dodge has been teasing us ever since they released the Banshee concept car back in 2022. So we'll cover the RT and the Scat Pack, the 2 door and the 4 door, and the EV and the gas powered versions today, looking at everything we know right now about the design, features, and of course the performance. So let's get right into this. Dodge revealed the car this morning with a cool 10 minute video where Dodge CEO Tim Kaniskis picked up the Dodge brothers Horace and John and essentially took them through the details of the new Charger while riding around and speaking to their legacy, which simultaneously explained all of that to the viewer as well. So before we get into the details, we will have the 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona Scat Pack and RT models, both are all electric and in two door format. There will also be the same but in four-door format released in 2025. Also note that the EVs are the Daytona models. Then there will be the gas-powered two-door Dodge Charger six-pack high output and the four-door six-pack standard output models, both powered by the three-liter twin-turbo Hurricane series of engines. It hasn't been confirmed yet if there will be a two-door standard output and four-door high output, so like the reverse of now, or if Dodge will just leave it as it is with the better performing gas car being the coupe. Note that the best performing Banshee trim was not yet revealed today. That would be like the Hellcat above the electric RT and Scat Pack. Kuniskis was quick to claim this as the world's first and only electric muscle car, as well as the brand's first multi-energy muscle car, and here's a quote from him on screen that explains that these cars essentially will supersede the outgoing 5.7 liter, 6.4 liter, and 6.2 liter Hemi cars in terms of performance. To follow along with the models, there were lots of pictures and videos of the Daytona Scat Pack in triple nickel and a video as well in red eye color. The RT was shown off in Bluticris and Peel Out. The six packs have not been given much press yet, just briefly shown off in the reveal video. More on the colors later in the video. We'll start with the power because that's what gets most Dodge brand enthusiasts most excited. This is the first vehicle to debut on the Stella Large platform. These Daytona models are all electric and all wheel drive driven by a 400 volt propulsion system. The future Banshee will be using an 800 volt system, but that's not revealed yet as I said. All the Daytona models have near perfect weight distribution between the two axles. It looks like the direct connection stage kit numbers I had used in previous videos are holding true for performance. The 340 or the RT would start at 456 horsepower and get up to 535, while the Scat Pack has between 590 to 670 horsepower. Torque numbers weren't confirmed yet. We do know the Scat Pack can do 0-60 in 3.3 seconds and the quarter mile in 11.5 seconds. Another important thing to note, Dodge is claiming the RT has 496 horsepower and the Scat Pack 670 because the launch models will come already equipped with the E-Stage kits. So this means that the 2024 Dodge Charger Daytona RT arrives with a standard direct connection Stage 1 upgrade kit while the Daytona Scat Pack is delivered with a Stage 2 kit but future 2025 and up models will require purchase of direct connection stage kits to upgrade from base models to stage one and stage two performance. Also, each of the front and rear electric drive modules or EDMs generate 335 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque, so that's why the Scat Pack can absolutely max out at 670 in this format. The EVs will also have the PowerShot feature standard. It's accessible by a button on the bottom right of the steering wheel, and that gives you an extra 40 horsepower for 15 seconds when activated by the throttle. There's also the gas-powered six-packs with the 3.0-liter twin-turbo Hurricane engines that we've seen in the Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer and the next-gen Ram 1500s. The standard output will have 420 horsepower, and the high output is at 550 horsepower. So we did learn a lot, but I still have a lot of questions like, is the Scat Pack 0-60 to in the quarter mile include Stage 2? Will each of the stage kits have different performance times? What about the torque official numbers and the RT and hurricane performance times? But those questions should hopefully be answered in the coming months as we find out more. As for the EVs, the system incorporates a high voltage battery pack, a dual integrated charge module, and both a front and rear electric drive module or EDM. The front EDM has front wheel end disconnect, improving the range and efficiency, while the rear EDM includes a mechanical limited slip differential to increase the traction and performance. The battery pack delivers 100.5 kilowatts installed capacity and a peak discharge rate of 550 kilowatts, and that was specifically designed to maximize the acceleration by allowing the motor to utilize the most power the battery can output in the span of a quarter mile. Along with the performance comes the expected range for the EVs. 
The RT is expected to have 317 miles of all-electric range, with 260 miles for the scat pack. The charger will recharge from 20 to 80% in 27 minutes when using a level 3 DC CCS fast charger. The estimated charging capacity is approximately 9.9 .9 miles a minute of charging time for the RT and 8.1 miles a minute for the Daytona scat pack when using a 350 kilowatt fast charger. Now let's move on to the exterior design, which does look very similar to the concept. When I went around to the various auto shows in 2022 and 2023 in Detroit, Chicago, and Toronto, regardless of whether or not people liked an electric muscle car, the overwhelming consensus was that everyone loved the look of the concept, and hopefully that outlook is shared for the production version as well. The electric versions and the gas-powered versions will look slightly different, but still similar at the same time. The electric Daytona models really seem to be highlighted by the front R-Wing, exclusive to the Daytonas only, which allows for air to flow through a front pass-through area, enhancing the downforce while creating a unique visual profile. Below that, all the Charger models get the white LED crosscar full-width front lighting, flanked by headlights in the corners, where the Dodge logo is subtly laser-edged. That's all centered with a lit-up Fratzog logo, which Dodge has chosen as their symbol for these next-generation cars. Remember, they had used this logo on select Dodge production vehicles between 1962 and 1975. The Fratzog logo was never used in advertising before, but it was used for emblems, badges, and in print on owner's manuals and service manuals. The rear of this car continues with a similar design as the current Charger, opting for a red ring of fire LED, also centered by the Fratzog. A gloss black painted roof will come standard, but to enhance the open air feel of the cabin, Dodge will also offer a full length glass roof. Both the Daytona Scat Pack and the RT will get fender badging to identify the models. There's less known about the gas-powered six-packs, but Dodge did quickly show a grill badge in their reveal video. All the Chargers get a very wide stance, with the two-door coupes and four-door sedans sharing a common wheelbase. In fact, Dodge hasn't even released any press photos of the six-pack as of right now. The Daytona RT will get 18 by 8 inch tech silver wheels standard, with the Scat Pack coming with 20 by 11 inch satin carbon wheels. The RT blacktop package would give you 20 by 10 inch black noise wheels, as you can see on screen here, and the track package for the Scat Pack will upgrade to 20 by 11.5 inch luster wheels. The stock tires weren't mentioned, but the Daytona Scat Pack track package with the wider wheels will come with staggered Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3 tires, 305 35ZR20 XL front, and 325 35ZR20 rears. Dodge will offer 8 bold colors for the first year, including After Dark, Destroyer Grey, Diamond Black, Peel Out, Red Eye, Triple Nickel, White Knuckle, and the late availability, Bluticris. Next we move inside the interior. The driver cluster is 10.25 inches for the RT, and a 16 inch screen will come with a scat pack. Above that free floating design is a heads up display. The center display screen is 12.3 inches in an angled center stack towards the driver. That uses the Uconnect 5 system. It will include a navigator charging location, which informs the electric driver models if the Daytona will need charging to reach a certain destination, and also locates potential charging stations along the route. There will also be electric pages as well as performance pages. The steering wheel screams performance with a flat bottom design, paddle shifters, and the power shop button for the RT and Scat Pack Daytonas. It's also heated. A pistol grip shifter is used with the start button just below it on the center console. Cloth and leatherette seats are standard, and the premium options will include heated black Nappa leather and demonic red Nappa leather. High-backed fixed headrest seats with a unique pass-through will be available with certain packages. Various packages will include the Plus Group, the Blacktop Package, the Track Package, Carbon and Suede Package, and Sun and Sound Package, but not much is known for each at this time. As for audio systems, standard for both the RT and Scat Pack is an Alpine 9-speaker setup, with 506 watt stereo and subwoofer. Optional for both is an Alpine 18 speaker 914 watt system. A new feature Dodge is trying out is an attitude adjustment interior with 64 colors of lighting with adjustable intensity that reacts to vehicle events like opening doors or pressing the ignition button. With the hidden hatch design, the new Charger has best in class cargo and rear cargo capacity. I'm not sure if that class refers to coupes or muscle cars, but either way, cargo isn't really a big selling point for performance vehicles. But still, the rear cargo area is 38.5 cubic feet, so that's 133% more volume than the current Charger. The small frunk will offer an additional 1.5 cubic feet of storage. Knowing people will go to the track, 
Dodge also decided to include a drive experience recorder with the track package on the scat pack, so drivers can capture and analyze a day at the track. This includes a forward-facing 1080p 60 frames per second camera with an in-camera microphone and a USB port for recording storage. Post-event analysis options will include in-vehicle playback or through external tools. Next, I want to look at some other performance features. The Daytona Scat Pack track package will add the largest ever brakes on a Dodge vehicle with 16-inch Brembo vented rotors and red six-piston front calipers with four pistons in the rear. Regenerative braking levels can be controlled via the paddle shifters. Six drive modes are included like Auto, Eco, Sport, Wet Snow, Track, and Drag. The last two are exclusive to the Scat Pack. The Scat Pack track package suspension will use dual valves, one for compression and one for rebound, among other features that it has. There's also the Fretsonic chambered exhaust for the electric versions, using two passive radiators to create a unique exhaust profile. Sound intensity is tied to higher performance, with a stealth sound mode also available. There are tons of race options as well, and I'll post what they are on screen now. That includes line lock, launch control, race prep, and performance pages. Only the scat pack will come with the donut and drift modes. Donut mode allows the vehicle to spin just the rear wheels, rotating around the front wheels with the traction control not kicking in. Drift mode allows the driver to select the slip angle, shifts the torque to the rear, softens the front dampers, stiffens the rear dampers, and the traction control system allows for different wheel speed differentials without setting fault codes. The next-gen charger also comes with a multitude of safety and advanced driving features. I won't go over them, but you can find the standard and optional features displayed on screen now. There's also a new Dodge digital key to allow for remote monitoring of charge levels, setting of charge schedules, and location of charging stations. Finally, when will these cars actually arrive? Two-door coupe versions of the all-electric Daytona RT and Daytona Scat Pack will begin production in mid-2024. Production of all the electric four-door Daytona RT and Scat Packs will begin in the first quarter of 2025. Gas-powered two-door six-pack high output and the four-door six-pack standard output are also scheduled to begin production in the first quarter of 2025. And all of these will be built at the Windsor, Ontario assembly plant in Canada. So that's it for this video, guys. The big reveal is finally here of the next-gen Dodge Charger. What do you think of the car? What do you think of the performance? What do you think of everything we know so far? Are you interested in purchasing one? Let me know down in the comments section below. Of course, seeing the Hemis go by the wayside is awful for Mopar enthusiasts, but this car is showing some promise, and at least they are offering some of those gas-powered versions as well. Make sure to tune into the Marspeed channel for a lot more information and videos on this car going forward. Thanks for watching, make sure to like, subscribe for all your Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.